Well, hello and welcome to my talk on ISPOs and OSPOs. I'm so delighted to be here um, with the Inner Source Commons uh, for the Inner Source Summit in 2024. Um, it and I'm delighted to share with you some of the work that I've been doing over the last little while um, and looking at ISPOs. Now, my title of my talk is ISPOs and OSPOs, but it really should have been ISPOs and OSPOs because I will be talking more about ISPOs uh, than OSPOs in this talk. But we will be coming at the end of the talk to do a comparison between ISPOs and OSPOs. So... Just to give a little bit of background of who I am and where I'm coming from, my name is Claire Dillon. I'm based in Dublin. I've been part of the Inner Source Commons community since 2018. Um, in the last number of years, I have started um, a PhD with the University of Galway and I'm part of the Lero uh, Software Centre or it's a research centre for software development. Um, and also I am a community lead with a community called Curious, which is the community for university and research institution OSPOS. Um, so through my work, uh, I have great uh, connections into folks that are doing both inner source and uh, open source and, and who run OSPOs, particularly in the academic setting. I'm also uh, participate and have participated over the last number of years in a number of, of communities, including inner source commons, but also chaos. Uh, I've co-founded uh, an organization called Open Ireland Network, which is about promoting open source in Ireland, uh, Sustain and Finos as well. Um, what I do also want to point out is that, of course, the work that you're going to hear today or the results you're going to hear today are part of some research I'm doing around inner source program offices, um, but it is work in progress. So uh, the final reports are not out yet, but I'm going to share some of the learnings I've had thus far. So the sources, particularly for the inner source work today that I'm using, is a lot from our inner source or ISPO, is inner source program office working group. That is uh, that happens regularly in Inner Source Commons. Um, that ISPO working group uh, meets every two weeks, um, and there's lots of information that they are actually sharing about their work in Inner Source program offices at their respective companies. If you want to learn more about that working group, please join the ISPO working group on the Inner Source Commons Slack. And indeed, the interviews that I've done with inner folks that work in Inner Source program offices are inner source program officers or indeed do activities that are related to that are very similar to inner source program offices but may not be called that in particular organizations and for purposes of this presentation uh, i'm going to use some definitions that have actually been taken from the open source program office world so some of you may be familiar with the concept of an ospo uh, it's been said to be a designated place that acts as a center of competency for an organization's open source operations and structure. And if we take that definition and apply it to inner source, we can pretty much go directly to the fact that an inner source program office could be a designated place that acts as a center of competency for inner source within an organization. I've also shared here a link that's a bit.ly link because I have, for those of you who may be familiar with Zotero, it's a tool that allows you to gather together references. Um, and I've created a group uh, called uh, that pulls together a lot of OSPO references that might be of use to people. So that's the that's the Tero OSPO link I've shared there. So if you want to look at a little few more references to open source program offices, you can find them at that link. And indeed, some of the ISPO, um, res, uh, I suppose, information that I'm sharing here can also be found at a great mind map that was created by the ISPO Working Group and Inner Source Commons. And that's a link to that mind map where you can share and and, and learn about some of the activities that uh, the folks that participate in that working group get up to. So the first thing I want to say, and, and I'm going to credit Anna, Anna Jimenez uh, from the Linux Foundation, who actually uh, uh, I've heard say this a lot. I don't know if it was her phrase, but she always says at the beginning of any OSPO conversation that my OSPO is not your OSPO and to remember that. And I suppose it's a really good lesson that we should all learn about the fact that Someone's ISPO is not necessarily the same as another person's ISPO. So this is a very key fact that I just want to highlight straight up at the very beginning. Um, the activities that happen in various different organization inner source program offices may differ from organization to organization. And even more particularly, they may change over time. So just because you've started out with one set of activities in an inner source program office doesn't mean that two years down the line, they will be the same activities or priorities that you're focusing within the organization. And some of those activities, and when I've tried to actually look at grouping together these activities, I've been focusing on where, which audience 
uh, those ISPO activities actually relate to. So if you wanted to group some of the activities that ISPO, the folks that works in ISPOs um, actually participate in, some of those are related to engaging with the bigger organization. So that might involve strategic planning, uh, working with leadership about the value of inner source and an inner source program office, policy and compliance work. But essentially, there are always, generally speaking, a set of activities that involve working with that broader organizational context. Secondly, a lot of the activities that are happen within an inner source program office are around the kinds of activities that you would do to actually help inner source practitioners within the company. So the second audience that ISPOs work with are practitioners within the company, and they talk about building resources, doing activities and events, uh, community management and uh, project support, where folks are actually um, I suppose, specifically and working directly with projects to actually help them in, in their uh, in, inner source efforts. Another set of activities that some ISPOs participate in are actually building or even maintaining tools and infrastructure. And they tend to be more technical uh, folks that might be engaged in those processing out tools. But you will hear of some people in ISPOs being very hands-on in terms of actually building um, infrastructure, portals, uh, discovery tools, and other um, tools that help measure uh, activity, inner source activity, and do data analytics. So there's a, there's a whole set of activities that relate to tools and infrastructure. And indeed, there are also activities that relate to managing the ISPO itself. So sometimes often left off the list as we talk about what we do externally. But a lot of folks within ISPOs have to do the basic work of keeping an inner source program office up and running. That involves things like hiring, setting out roles and responsibilities, um, and also a lot of work that involves external engagement. So folks that might be in ISPOs that come along to meetings at Inner Source Commons and, and work with other organizations to share learnings and to, to work through problems together, that external engagement is part of an ISPO activities and one that probably shouldn't be left out to make sure that they're included in the right job descriptions. So who's involved in ISPOs? What kinds of roles are there within an Inner Source Program Office? Well, first of all, they typically tend to be small teams between two and four people. Um, they often are made up of program managers or maybe a director of inner source. They can involve technical experts or engineers. Again, maybe some of those folks that might be working on building out infrastructure. There are often communications or content specialists, and they would be specialists in terms of actually building resources or indeed doing communication plans. Um, and some folks actually have those types of competencies as roles within their inner source program office. And then sometimes inner source advocates, they might be just um, subject matter experts who have great experience with inner source and want to share that with their with their community. Folks that work in inner source program offices may be full time, they may be part time, they may be shared resources. So they may actually have some responsibilities in, um, in other teams, for example, platform engineering or developer experience teams or OSPOs indeed, um, and then have part time uh, responsibilities within the actual ISPO. Um, and they may just be advocates and volunteers. So there's some folks that actually, and some ISPOs that would list off uh, people who may be volunteering part of their time and their effort to an ISPO activity, but that may not be part of their formal job role. And I think it's important to also state that folks that are in ISPOs spend, often spend, particularly in the beginning, but perhaps all through an ISPO's life cycle, they spend a lot of time working with other teams within an organization. So that might be development teams, legal departments, tax departments, security teams, executive leadership. Um, it's not just working with inner source practitioners, but they're often very involved and have tentacles out into the organization and build relationships with uh, folks that are involved in other parts of an organization's operations. So if we go very briefly into some of the additional details of the, some of those activities um, may involve, 
I'm going to list off some of the things that folks have mentioned that may be part of the role. And once again, I'm going to remind people that my ISPO is not your ISPO. And I'm not suggesting that this is a full checklist that every ISPO has to, to engage in. But I do think that it's worthwhile noting that depending on the context of your organization, and that means what your priorities are with relation to inner source, what the resources you have available, what the competencies of the people on the team may be, and what outcomes you may want in what time frame, you may choose different sets of these activities that you may want to focus on at different times within the ISPO lifecycle. So looking at that organizational engagement I mentioned, where folks are actually working with other parts of the organization, sometimes that can be involve removing organizational blockers. And I'm not going to go through each one of these bullet points. I will make the slides available so you can look at them afterwards, but I will just call out a few that are seem to be typical activities that people would engage with. This idea of removing organizational blockers and looking at governance models and working with um, folks around, for example, understanding what the priorities are with executive leadership and reporting on progress against those priorities tends to be an important set of activities within the context of an ISPO. And very specifically, that, that really kind of um, is focused when it comes to policy and compliance. So a lot of folks, and, and I would say in particular in the early stages of inner source program offices within an organization, spend a lot of time perhaps working with legal security and risk teams just to make sure that they enable inner source to happen within their organization. And there may be those organizational blockers that may not be um, obvious in, in perhaps pilot stages, but may emerge over time and are very important in it, you know, that need to be addressed before you attempt to scale inner source within the organization. And I should mention that inner source program offices are very often put in place when there is executive support to scale inner source um, implementations within an organization. And in that effort to scale, sometimes it's very important to actually make sure that everything that's happening within an inner source implementation is aligned with and in compliance with existing uh, regulations and compliance documents or, or processes that may be in place within an organization. So in particular, early in the life cycle of an ISPO, this idea of working with folks that are involved in policy and compliance within the organization may become a, an important part of their activities. Secondly, and this perhaps is the one that I think most people are familiar with, we certainly hear a lot of in terms of the ISPO working group, um, are around the types of materials or events and activities that, uh, that may happen when you're trying to promote inner source within the practitioner community. So when you're working with folks within the organization to raise awareness about what inner source is, how best to do it, what are the roles and responsibilities, how, you know, what are the processes you need to put in place and enabling that. That may be in the form of creating material, curricula, learning materials that are designed to go out to large scales, like large amounts of people. It may also be, be related to actually engaging with groups, trying to get them interested, that type of community building, community management activity that often could be quite hands on, setting up lunch and learns, doing community activities and events managing comms channels, moderating, answering questions, all of that kind of activity can again be another set of, of uh, uh, efforts that might happen within an ISPO. And then things like project support, where you're actually working directly with projects to help them overcome any issues they may have, answer questions, and help them do better inner source. Tools and infra, like very quickly, this can involve stuff like developer portals, it can involve uh, discoverability tools, it can involve tools that do metrics and measurement, it can involve uh, the idea of automating tools to do compliance tracking and checking in terms of what licenses are in place. There are a lot of efforts that happen that perhaps might be that kind of technical effort infrastructure, and also in relation to measurement and measuring the success of inner source within the organization. And then lastly, I mentioned it before very quickly, all of the activities that involve setting up the actual ISPO itself and managing the people and doing everything that you may need to do to um, actually make sure that the ISPO runs correctly and indeed the external engagement. So then thinking about ISPOs and OSPOs, 
Well, the devil's in the detail, because if you look at those high level areas that I mentioned, things like community engagement and events and activities and executive leadership engagement and external engagement and tools and infrastructure, they may be the similar topics that you will see in any OSPO list. But the actual detail of what is involved in inner source versus open source may differ. Now, I'm just going to think about some thoughts on this at the moment, just some of the things that pop out to me. Um, but again, I have not gone into extreme detail in my work to actually look at what the OSPO activities are. So this is more looking at it from the ISPO perspective and reflecting on how that might look in the OSPO world, as opposed to being an exhaustive list of everything that might happen in an OSPO as well. But basically, with relation to uh, in relation to strategic leadership and planning, um, I think something, something that's... Uh, I suppose hit me is that often uh, the conversations with relation to inner source can be slightly different than that relation to open source because sometimes the open source conversations are maybe limited to either the the policies regarding the consumption of open source or whether or not the organization is interested in doing open source. But it can be maybe a smaller subset of the types of conversations that happen with regard to inner source where people are maybe thinking about the actual competencies and practices that happen across the entire organization. So those conversations in terms of the value points and what what the priorities of an organization are, the content of those conversations may differ dramatically. And similarly, in the context of community building, from an ISPO's perspective, you're focusing on the internal culture and norms altogether. But sometimes OSPOs are more focused on how people from the organization behave externally, which may be different than the internal um, norms. Um, and so that they may differ in, in those conversations and how they work. Policy development, again, in the detail can be very different whether or not you're looking at the ISPO policies within an organization versus how that organization engages with the external world. And indeed, for those of you who've been around in InterSource Commons for a while, you know that the whole idea of transfer pricing and licensing InterSource licenses has additional effort, which may not be even necessary from an open source perspective. So there's often additional effort that might go on, particularly if you're attempting to do InterSource across national boundaries. Again, from a training and education perspective, the content may be some similarities, but some differences because the inner source is often much more contextualized to the organization. And indeed, there may be different opportunities in terms of leveraging the actual vehicles and the, the, the kind of activities that are already happening within an organization that may not be as easy to do if you're thinking about uh, open source engagement, which may only address maybe only a smaller proportion of the folks within the organization are engaged in that activity tooling and infrastructure, because they're focused on, you know, if folks are actually thinking about contributing externally, then the tools and infrastructure might already be set externally. But internally, um, it, you know, perhaps they're looking at the entire organization and how you um, how do you adapt that internal processes and tools to actually support uh, inner source throughout the entire organization. And again, from an inner source versus OSPO perspective, they're similar, but maybe the competencies that people require may be different. Um, and the difference between whether you need open source experience to be within an ISPO is an interesting one. And indeed, the measurement and reward. Uh, sometimes, again, the detail of the conversation may differ whether or not you're in inner source versus open source. And indeed, what you can see and the activity you have you have control of or that you can actually is visible to the organization. So there are just some thoughts around what may be those similarities. If you want to continue this conversation and get more involved in what we're doing, I would recommend that everyone get involved in the ISPO working group. It's a great place to learn about how what happens in ISPOs. If you're interested in more uh, information about the research that I'm partaking in and some of the other researchers that are actually part of the Inner Source Commons, there's a research channel in the Inner Source Commons Slack that you can join and hear more about the kind of research we're doing. And indeed, if you want to help shape my research, please do contact me directly. Um, to be included in this very particular research that I'm doing at the moment. And I'd be delighted to take questions if I have any time.